Howdy. My name is Nonat, and welcome back to the Book of the Dead. Today, we're going to be talking about some really cool new archetypes available for those who might want to take necromancy and make it a key part of their character. And before you start leaving me even more really nice, thoughtful comments, I promise I'm feeling a whole lot better. My nose is still weird, I'll sound a little stuffy in this entire video, but overall, the headaches are gone, the chills are gone, I feel a lot better. Thank you all so much for your kind words, me getting over this stupid COVID Omicron Delta 3.5 and a half dot hack GU fantasy 13-2. But hey, it helps if I can sound like death while we talk about death. But before we talk about death, you know we gotta talk about today's sponsor, World Anvil. Let's face it, we live in a world where most tabletop role-playing games don't take place on the tabletop. They take place on your computer. And World Anvil has you covered. You may know World Anvil mostly for its campaign organization features, but did you know World Anvil has entire session organization features, including reminders, a whole party system, and a full way for your players to interact with each other while using the software. Your players can take notes right there on World Anvil during the session and use the built-in equipment manager to manage their equipment. Pretty self-explanatory. It keeps track of hit points, it keeps track of spell slots, and there's even a built-in dice roller. Y'all, you can run an entire session of your favorite TTRPG without ever leaving the World Anvil site. And you know I've got your back, so right now if you click the link in the description, you can use promo code NONAT1 at checkout, and if you pay for a 12-month subscription, you will get 40% off. I don't know what 40% of 12 is, but that's a lot of free months. Look at that math that I totally did. So use the link below to get started on World Anvil. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about dead things. Like me. Because my nose is stuffy and I sound dead. Before we get into the archetypes, I want to talk about three new feats that have been added in this book. Not archetypes, nothing. These are feats available to three specific classes. These feats are only available to very specific clerics, oracles, and wizards, and those are clerics with a negative font, oracles with the bones curse, and wizards who took the necromancy school as their favorite school. The first feat isn't great, but there are some campaigns that would make use of it. Undying Conviction gives all undead minions you control that are within 30 feet of you a plus two status bonus to saving throws to resist positive damage, as well as to will saves against mind controlling effects. This is really cool. If you're in a campaign where you're fighting angels and paladins and clerics that could easily just annihilate your minions, giving them a flat plus two to all saving throws is really solid. So like I said, if you're not fighting those things, this will be worthless, but if you are, not bad. Necromancer's Visage is already all the way at level 12, and this is an interesting defensive passive effect against hostile undead creatures. If an undead creature that is two or more levels lower than you attacks you, they must make a will save. If they succeed, nothing happens, and if they critically succeed, they are permanently immune to this effect. Now, if they fail, they do not get to take that attack action against you. Additionally, it can't attack you again that turn, and if it critically fails, it cannot attack you for as long as your necromancer's visage persists, which means as long as you don't attack them, they can't attack you. This is kind of like the sanctuary spell, which is why it says you can't use both this and sanctuary against someone, but it's completely passive. You don't need to cast it, there's no duration. This is a permanent sanctuary against weak undead creatures, and that's super cool. And finally, at level 14, we have uh, Sepulchral Sublimation. I hate you for making me say that. Sepulchral? Is that a word? This is an incredibly cool meta magic, though. For one action, you sacrifice an undead minion you control. Then, you cast a Necromancy School spell, and as long as that spell's level is half of the undead's level or lower, you do not expend the spell slot. This is a really cool way to balance free spells, and this is incredible for something like the Oracle who has lower spell slots. Now, I shouldn't say it's amazing. It requires a lot of setup and a lot of work, primarily because they need to be undead minions you 
permanently control. This means you cannot use Sepulchral Sublimation on something like Summon Undead. These need to be done on either Undead Companions, which we'll talk about in a little bit, or permanently summoned Ritual Create Undead Undead. But if you have a lot of downtime, say a week of downtime, and you just happen to have some corpses laying around, you could create a bunch of low to mid-level undead creatures. You're level 14 at this point. You can easily make a level 4 or a level 6 undead creature with a pretty easy skill check. If you make one of them per day, let's say you make 7 level 6 undead creatures, you don't even need them for combat. That's just 6 or 7 extra third level or lower spells you can cast, whether because you ran out of spell slots or just because you didn't want to waste the spell slots. This has a lot of work around. It's very difficult to use and it's not gonna be useful at the drop of a hat, but you can build a character around it and it's really cool. So those are the three new necromancy focused spells for oracles, necromancer wizards, and negative font oracle clerics. I'm trying my best guys, I'm sorry. My brain's still a little muddy. So let's get into what you're all here for, the archetype. Starting with the reanimator archetype, and it's exactly what it sounds like. This is an archetype all around creating and summoning undead. They of course get access to all three of the feats we just talked about, as well as the reanimator dedication. Already, the dedication is honestly incredibly powerful. If you're a spontaneous caster like a sorcerer, Animate Dead gets added to your repertoire and is added as a free signature spell that doesn't count against your other signature spells. And if you're a prepared caster, you can spend 10 minutes at any time to replace one of your prepared spells with Animate Dead. And the big feature of this archetype is that if you animate or create undead and the body is still mostly intact, that summoned undead gets plus one status bonus to attack rolls, armor class, saving throws, and skill checks. Sorry, this is only for animate dead, not for the ritual create undead, but basically, as long as your GM is nice, this is going to give all of your undead summons a permanent plus one to everything. That's amazing. Like we have not seen something like this that gives such a flat numerical bonus just to something so specific as animate dead the spell. And I would love to see more things like this in the future. Granted, not so many that they become best in slot. You know what I'm talking about? But for something as specific as the reanimator, making their animated dead stronger than a normal person's animated dead is awesome. Deathly Secrets, you get a focus point if you don't already have one, or you get an extra focus point, and you get the Eyes of the Dead or Subjugate Undead focus spell. We'll talk about those after the rest of the feats. Also, you can select this feat a second time if you want the other focus spell. Macabre Virtuoso just takes the ability to create undead as a ritual and makes it much more doable in a standard day-to-day -day gameplay. Long story short, you get the Create Undead Ritual, you learn two undead to create, and each time you level up, you can swap those out for two different undead. But the big benefit is reducing the cast time from one day to four hours, and you get a flat plus two to the check. And, and you don't need a secondary caster like most rituals. This means that by yourself in four hours, you can conjure a permanent undead companion. Remember that feat we were talking about, that level 14 feat that lets you sacrifice undead for free spell slots? Yeah, with this, you can make five or six a day, you know, if you don't sleep. More accurately, you can make three or four a day in downtime, you know, again, if you don't have, uh, you know, if you have enough bodies. This is a must have. Honestly, if you are going to have things that don't require you to summon and then sustain the summon, you need this feat and it's amazing. Bonds of Death, this is pretty standard, though at a pretty low level. Once per day as a free action, you can sustain an animate dead summon spell without having to spend an action on it. Pretty cool. A lot of wizards and spellcasters get this at like level five. I think 16 or 18 to do on any spell. So the fact that it can only be done on Animate Dead makes it a level eight feat that's super easy to do. And remember, this makes it possible to animate two undead. For three actions, you animate dead. On your next turn, you Bonds of Death animate dead. I didn't even read the last three sentences. Oh my God. On subsequent rounds, you can sustain both animate deads with a single action. What? 
okay, this is one of the best feats in the game, especially for a summoner. So now you get to have two summons and you get two actions to still cast spells with. This is nuts. Okay, so I definitely misread it a little bit. It's a little confusing. It looks like you need to have already cast Animate Dead twice, and then with Bonds of Death, you tie them together. So on turn one, you Animate Dead. On turn two, you Animate Dead, Bonds of Death, and tie them together. And from then on, you only need one action to sustain them. Weirdly worded, I definitely assumed a lot, but hopefully that explains it better. Greater Deathly Secrets at level 10, we get two more focus spells, we get Grasping Grave and Malignant Sustenance, like I said, we'll talk about those in a minute. And level 12, Master of the Dead, you get the Shambling Horror Focus Spell, which is also a focus spell. The Eyes of the Dead focus spell is basically just the Eyes of the Beast focus spell. Has a range of one mile, and for three actions, you can see through the eyes and senses of your companion. Simple as that, really, you can animate dead, have them walk away, and then see through their eyes. If cast at level 11, this upcasts to 6th level, and then the range is 100 miles, and you can communicate with telepathy with your companion, giving them further instructions, which is important because they're mindless. So this is a great way to, to infiltrate and, and gain information without having to actually risk your own skin. You can just summon your undead, sustain it, and then just have them walk away. Uh, granted, only up to 10 minutes. Subjugate undead is... Okay, for three actions, you target an undead creature that is no more than four levels lower than you, which means if you're casting this at level six, it needs to be a level one or two undead, then that undead makes a will save, and if it fails, it becomes your minion for one minute, and if they crit fail, your minion for ten minutes. This is... not great. I understand why it had to be as weak as it is. If you could use it on things your level, then suddenly you're party of four against three enemies and you just subjugate one of them, well, you've won the fight. Not only is that one less enemy, but that's one more ally. Now, I guess if you're fighting like 30 zombies that are four levels lower than you, it could be a little easier, but overall, this is never really going to have much use. Maybe in roleplay. This might have some use in roleplay if there's an enemy or even a cognizant zombie. Or it doesn't have to be mindless. No, okay, so that's a good point. It does not have to be mindless. So if you are playing a campaign in, like, the city of Geb in Ustalav, you could technically use Subjugate Undead to make a citizen there your thrall for one to ten minutes and probably get a lot of information out of them. GMs, beware this spell if you're running in Ustalav. Shambling Horror is okay. It's very similar to Subjugate Undead, except it's raising them from the dead, not turning them to your side. Three actions, lasts for ten minutes, and they do need to be four levels lower than you again. Also kind of unfortunate, you don't use the stat blocks of the creature you reanimated. You either pick a skeleton or a zombie of the stat size of the creature you reanimated. So if they're large, you pick a large zombie. Additionally, their level obviously can't be higher than the creature you revived. And it gets kind of complicated from here, I'm not going to lie. It keeps its original movement speed from the original creature, not the zombie stat block, and it keeps the physical damaging attacks it had, but if they had an attack that deals fire damage, they don't get to keep that, but the attack modifier is made using the skeleton or zombie stat block modifier, not the original creature, and some of it might not make sense, and even the text here says the GM gets to choose what abilities persist. This is a really overcomplicated spell. I think the reason it's so complicated is because even though it says duration 10 minutes, the creature is permanently at your side. It does say that after you release a shambling horror, it dies after 10 minutes. But if you don't release it, obviously, it will stay alive until it dies. And if it dies, you can reanimate it again with the shambling horror focus spell. This leads to an almost permanent ally with Shambling Horror. So long as something doesn't stop you from reanimating the corpse again, you can keep bringing it back after every single battle, allowing you for this basic meat shield of a creature to keep dying for you. Now the important thing is that if a corpse has been dead all the way through until the next sunrise, Shambling Horror does not work. This is an important thing to note. It's not for 12 hours, it's not for 24 hours, it is dead until the next sunrise. 
sunrise or since the last sunrise. If sunrise happens, you can no longer use shambling horror on any corpse. What this means is technically, if your corpse, your horror dies in combat, then sunrise happens in combat, you cannot bring it back. It's weird, but it's technically how it works. And actually, Malignant Sustenance and Grasping Grave are both in the core rulebook, so go check those out. Overall, I think Reanimator is going to be an archetype that is taken for the dedication and the ritual upgrade. I don't know how many people will be taking the focus spells because they're kind of a little bit complicated, but if you're just looking for a way to augment your ability to create undead, the dedication and the feat that increases the ritual's efficacy are both fantastic. And honestly, I'm going to go ahead and call the video there. I was going to cover the other archetype, but I think I'll save that for another video because I'm already pushing 30 minutes of recording, which is probably going to be 15 to 20 minutes of video. So we'll have to save that for another day. But thank you all so very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the new necromancy feat and the reanimator archetype in the comments below. You know I love hearing from you. I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsors, which are or my sponsor. I mean, technically, you're kind of my sponsors <laughs> to my patrons who are now filling out the screen. Screen. I'm gonna have to figure out some way to get them all to stick while keeping them in different tiers. I'll figure something out. But I do also want to give a shout out to my sponsor, World Anvil. Don't forget to click the link in the description to check out World Anvil and use code NONAT1 at checkout for 40% off a 12 month prescription. Pres I said prescription. I'm, I'm gonna go and eat some soup. Have a good one. NONAT1s.